Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Podcast. It's Thursday, August the 18th, and it's time for another one of our editions on NFL regular season win totals. I have a special guest today. His name is Mr. Greg DePama from the Prime Sports Network. I did a lot of shows with Greg in the past. And, you know, it came time to do a New York Jets preview today and a, a regular season win total projection, which Greg is going to do. And there's no better guy I could think of in this industry or in any industry that could give you his honest and forthright and accurate uh, description of the Jets and their overview on what things are to come in the upcoming season in Greg De Palma. Greg, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Good to talk to you again, Ross. Always a pleasure, my friend. Uh, you know, yes. I watch a lot of your shows and enjoy them on the Prime Sports Network. And uh, um, and, and then, uh, I'm sorry, I got interrupted there for a second. Anyway, um, and you do a great job, my friend. As Thank always. you. And uh, tell the folks a little bit about uh, the Prime Sports Network and uh, how you originated and how you got it going and where it is at this particular juncture in time. Well, I'll uh, be as fast as I can uh, yeah. with my with my resume. Basically, 20 years, uh, uh, South Florida sports talk radio. Uh, everybody was changing, obviously, to the internet and social media, and I did the same thing. Went from a website that I owned for about five, six years, then transferred the website to the YouTube channel. And we've had the same name. It was primesportsnetwork.com. I still own the URL. I'm not using the website right now, but I still have it. And now we have Prime Sports Network on the YouTube channel. And we've had it for a few years, but it's really only been the last year that we have started to implement the right platform and the right shows and the guests and everything the way that we wanted to and promote it the right way so we're starting to build traffic uh finally but again it's because that's taken a long time you know what how it oh, is yeah. you know us us old guys uh <laughs> you know we're, we're used to a completely different type of technology so it takes us some time to catch up to the young guys and the technology what we have to do to get the word out and i'm now up to speed so uh, a lot of it now is just a matter of good content. And and I'm really excited about the content we have this season. Well, I'm glad you're up to speed. I got, I got some catching up to do. But <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, look, you could have all the best technology in the world. If the content's not good and That's it's right. not presented correctly, it means nothing. So, again, I'm very confident that you folks are really going to enjoy what Greg has to say in regards to the New York Jets. Look, you might not all be New York Jets fans out there. That's okay. But uh, what you want to do is listen to Greg, and he has several shows on the Prime Sports Network that may interest you. Some of them have to do with sports betting. Yes, others do not. Uh, Greg, fill the folks in just a brief overview on some of the shows you do and the variety of shows that you do. Well, I'd have to actually say that every show we do has some sort of percentage of handicapping in it. Now, some may be 20%, 30%, others could be 50 or 100%. But everything I do, there is some sort of, hey, you know what? If I tune in, I'm going to get some sort of a knowledge and understanding and data and commentary on what could work for a team or a sport. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the, the interviews and some of the shows that I do that probably would be the least handicapping uh, diverse shows would be like the number of college football preview interviews I've been doing. But even those are very important to people who want to know, hey, how are the Georgia Bulldogs going to do this year defending their championship? Or how's Michigan going to do? Uh, how's Nebraska going to do? So we've already, I think we have about 12 or 13 interviews already stocked on the channel of analysts that are either beat writers, whatever. The bottom line is, is they follow those specific teams. I interview them for about a half hour. I try to find out everything I can about the team, especially since it's college football. Hey, what's going on? Turnover, recruits, things of that nature. So those shows are right now really taking up a lot of my time. The other shows that go on at this point in time that are non-football related, we have a horse racing show we do every week. A John great Hardy. one. I love it. Yeah, so John uh, is a tremendous thoroughbred handicapper. He's been doing it for like 30 years. He works with the sheets, very popular handicapping tool. 
Uh, matter of fact, Chad Summers, who's a thoroughbred trainer, comes on now every week as well. Uh, so we get his insight. So that's on every week. Matter of fact, I just finished recording the show and posting one of the shows on our channel. So that's every Thursday we post a, a thoroughbred show. That's just handicapping, obviously. Uh, and then we have our NASCAR show every week. That that's recorded every Tuesday. So if you're into NASCAR and you you like you want to know who who to pick, uh, the drivers, the odds, the past performances, all that kind of stuff, we do a NASCAR show. Again, most of it, I say, ninety percent is handicapping. Uh, we also have done a golf show that just ended a couple of weeks ago, but we are going to restart 2023, January. That'll be every week. So if you're into golf, PGA Tour, matter of fact, Hall of Famer Jan Stevenson uh, is on our show. Impressive. And if, if you remember Jan, she was yeah. the sex symbol yeah. back in the 70s on the LPGA Tour. When we were Tour. young. When we, when were, we young, were young, buddy. Yes, yes. <laughs> so she's on the show. And we also have another uh, handicapper, golf handicapper, who doubles as a fantasy football expert uh, who not only does the golf show, but I also will be with him talking fantasy football during the season with our new partners at Draft Sharks. So that's a new partner of ours. I have a partner called rlads.com. Yeah. And basically, they're, they're actually a partner client. And our lads, uh, basically, so everything I do football related gets the our lads brand. And if you are familiar or not, let's say you're not familiar with our lads, uh, best NFL and college football depth charts in the industry. Absolutely. So 100%. Big, I use them all the time, Greg. Yes. So if you are, and, and most, a lot of people will use it for fantasy and we get that because you want to know who's next on the depth chart. But it's also, again, very important for handicapping because you want to know, okay, who's next on the depth chart? Okay, if somebody right. goes down, who's number two, who's number three, that kind of stuff. So, And by the way, he, the reason it's the best is because the NFL will send in their reports like ex, uh, transactions as soon as they're made. The same when – when, when the teams get the transaction reports via email, uh, our lads gets it. And that's because Dan Shanka, who owns our lads – is a former NFL scout. So he puts a guide together uh, that I actually, this is a draft review guide that we, that we just have out a couple of months ago. And then there's the draft guide that comes out just before the NFL draft. This is really his bread and butter. And how could people get that, Greg? That's just to go to rlads.com. Okay. Very simple. rlads.com. And you can just go to the subscription area and the guides are still available. Uh, the draft review guide just came out. And so I'm responsible for 11 teams in the guide. So we basically, I, I take a look at the, uh, the, those 10, those 11 teams before the draft and let you know what they did in the off season and what their specific needs are for the draft. And then when the draft is over, we talk about the draft picks, what they did, you know, where we like it, not like it, that sort of thing. And one of the teams obviously that I cover is the jets. Yeah. So that's at our lads.com. And Again, it's not only great now for the depth charts, but also for fantasy football and scouting. So that's everything that's associated with football uh, before the season. When the season starts, uh, I'll be doing a show once again with your buddy, Mark Lawrence, a playbook. And, so And great show, guys. You, you really need to check that out. Mark's an icon in the industry. Yep. Greg is the host of all the shows there. Greg, listen, before Greg even got into the Prime Sports Network, the guy was on radio. He's a real on-air personality. Uh, I'm, you know, you get a guy like me, I'm just the handicapper that hosts my own show. Th this gentleman here, he he's the guy. He's the guy. He's he's done this for a living. This is what he does. And on top of that, he's extremely knowledgeable. And I want everybody Appreciate to that. Help. Yeah. And on top of that, um, that helps, right, Greg? Yeah, oh, yeah, you better be. Yeah, exactly. Ain't going to go long in this business if you're not. <laughs> and on top of that, I know that, yes, is he a Jets fan? Absolutely. But I could tell you from my experience, I wouldn't bring anybody on who's just biased to the point where uh, their opinions professionally are not objective. And I could tell you from working with Greg, uh, he is when they're bad, he's harsh on them. And when they start to show some promise, he's also good to them. So uh, I was actually harsh on them the year they played. It was, I think, their last best chance to make the playoffs, which was the, the year Ryan they Fitz lost to the Bills in the final yes. game. Yeah, I did not like that team at all. 
I was okay. completely against what was going on. I yeah. didn't think that they they were very good at all. I didn't like the direction of the. I thought that they were trying to you know put one more winning run together. I thought it was a bad idea. I did not believe in Ryan Fitzpatrick. So yeah. So even if the team was going good, some yep. not a lot because they aren't haven't been very good lately. But yeah, I, I I'm just not gonna faith you know blindly root for the team if they're going good or just trash the team just to trash them because that's what happens a lot too. Again, objective and, pro- and professional always. So, uh, Greg, uh, we we have some uh, stuff we want to discuss. Yes. Not a lot of time, so let's get to some of the items. So, again, I'm talking to Greg De Palma from the Prime Sports Network or Prime Sports. Is it Prime Sports Network YouTube? Correct. Go okay, Prime so Sports Network. You want to look that up, Prime Sports Network YouTube channel. You'll see a bunch of his archives of all his shows. Um, and folks, not only sports betting, but a big variety. And our lads, let me tell you, if you're handicapped in a preseason like I do, I've always been a thorough believer of knowing the quality of depth on each team. And if you go to our lads and their depth charts, Greg's right. I mean, in my opinion, second to none. And that's going to help you along the way in terms of your NFL preseason handicapping as well, because we all know. Uh, the stars, for the most part, don't see the field. If they do, very limited. And uh, it's all about the second, third uh, teamers in the back end of the roster and such. So that's ourlads.com, folks. I would highly recommend it as well. The Jets in their draft, uh, a lot of accolades, Greg, and uh, rightfully so. I mean, I, I really like their first-round picks. I especially like uh, uh, Sauce Gardner. And I think they got a real steal with Bre- uh, Bryce, Bryce Hill, Bryce Hill, Bryce, Bryce, Bryce Hall, Bryce Hall. <laughs> yeah, boy, oh boy. Anyway, easy for me to say uh, the running back out of Iowa state in the first yes. round. I really think he was a real steal. So your thoughts on their draft. Uh, do you agree? Uh, oh yeah. With- I mean, it was one of those, it doesn't really, I mean, when, as a fan, and you follow your team. And unfortunately, if you're not winning and you're in the draft in this position a lot, you're, this is your time of year. And so a lot of times, especially if you continue to struggle, it's a disappointment and you can then learn what the disappointment looks like because you're used to it. And then all of a sudden, when you see a, a general manager like Joe Douglas, make the kind of moves that he has made prior to this draft and then during this draft. And what I mean is, is being completely proactive and seeing that, wait a second, Jermaine Johnson, we were thinking of taking him at 10 and now it's about 17, 18 and he's still on the board. I'm going to contact all these general managers, 18, 19, 20, until I get the right one. If he's still on the board that says, yeah, okay, I'll make a deal with you. He goes out, makes the deal for Jermaine Johnson. Same. As soon as he makes that deal, Wait, Brees Hall is still on the board? Wait a second. Let me see if I can make a deal there. He tried to make a deal before the end of the first round. He could have potentially made a deal and drafted Brees Hall on day one. Didn't get it done. Was able to get it done immediately on day two and moved up a couple spots to get Brees Hall. So that is a not only proactive general manager, but a very smart one who understands value as far as the draft is concerned. And I, I kind of find it funny because everybody talked glowingly about Joe Douglas in the draft. And now after one preseason game, because Zach Wilson gets hurt and he's going to be out a few weeks, may or may not miss week one. I'm hearing some of these so-called analysts talk about, well, I don't know if the Jets don't have a winning record this year, Joe Douglas's job might be in jeopardy. Yeah. It's just absolutely ridiculous. There's yeah. no Joe Douglas's job is not in jeopardy. I don't care if they go three and third, because if they go three and 13 or four and 12, it's because it's going to be because they have a complete rash of injuries like they had last year. They're way too talented. Yeah. And we'll get to the totals in a minute, because I think I'm giving you a hint of where I'm going. They're just yeah. way too talented that unless they do have a rash of injuries, they are just going to have without question their best season, probably in five or six years. I haven't even, I've been so, I, I, I'm blind to the losing by now that I don't even, I don't even last year. I know they, they won four games, but before that, all I know is a lot of losing. I know that they had a pretty decent record. You're one of Adam Gase, believe it or not. Yeah. Year two was a disaster, but in general, a lot of losing. And I think Joe Douglas has done a fantastic job. I knew as soon as Joe Douglas became general manager, it took me just a few months 
to realize that they had the right guy, especially when he hired Sal as the head coach. And I, I've been saying it all along. I haven't deviated it at all, and I'm not going to deviate. Not only is Joe Douglas the right general manager, but Robert Sal is the right head coach. Now, how long does it take these guys to, to build a winner? I don't know. Everybody, Every franchise is different, but I am going to guarantee you that Joe Douglas and Robert Sala are going to be the two guys that are going to lead the Jets back to a winning franchise and back eventually to a Super Bowl. Zach Wilson, is he that guy? I actually think he is. I don't think he may be a superstar. I'm not saying he's going to be Patrick Mahomes or one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the league, but you don't have to be. As long as you're a top 10 quarterback, and I believe he eventually will get to that point, as long as you have a great defense, good coaching, a really good general manager, and you build that around a guy like Zach Wilson, I think you're going to have a lot of winning ahead of you. And that's why I believe the Jets are headed. May not be this year. I'm not talking playoffs yet. But I do think that when we get to December, unless, again, there's a rash of injuries, I believe they're going to be contending for a wild card spot. Yeah, uh, because they haven't built the roster to this point, in my estimation, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, where they could afford a rash of injuries. Correct. Because it takes time to build quality depth. You know, and, and uh, I think they're on the right foot. I agree with you with uh, Joe Douglas. I think they got the right guy. I like Robert Sella. I liked him when he was a defensive coordinator at the, with the 49ers. He, he's a, a uh, player's coach, for lack of a better phrase, yeah. or to use an overused cliche. Um, and again, uh, you can't judge him on the first year. And you can't do it. Zach Wilson, the bottom line is this, guys. Uh, the kid got thrown right into the fire, number one. And number two, his supporting cast wasn't oh, exactly top-notch. That's a great so, point. Yeah, I mean, so you can't make a fair assessment. That leads me to this question, Greg. Uh, his status on his injury, number one, if he's not ready to go on opening day, uh, is it Flacco or is it Mike White? I mean, I guess Flacco is number two on the depth chart. At our yeah. rats, could that change? I, I don't know. So you tell me. No, uh, Robert Sala. Uh, I think the combination of Sala again, remembering Flacco was with the Baltimore Ravens organization. So was Joe Douglas. Uh, not that uh, they connected, but just, uh, a lot. But it just the people that ran the organization. Joe Douglas was a part of that, so he knows Flacco really well. Uh, Robert Sala is a big fan of Flacco's, and. What, look, I, I I was like you when Flacco, because I remember a couple of years ago when Flacco was here, the 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 real the, the 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 first year, the bad, the really bad year, even the Sam Darnold year, yeah. And Flacco went out there with just a bad cast of players, and boy was he awful. I mean, yeah. it was like he can't move anymore. They got no offensive line. They got no playmakers. He looked really bad. I thought, why does this guy retire? I mean, I don't even want to see this guy anymore. Yeah. Last year was a little bit different and new system. And I, and you know how it is with systems in the NFL. Yeah. Some coach, some quarterbacks work with one system, some they just can't figure out or it just doesn't work for them. This system is a quarterback friendly system. Don't forget Josh Johnson put up big numbers for the Jets last year when he played a couple of times uh, yeah. in relief, yeah. uh, just to show you how easy the system is for a quarterback. Flacco actually looked good last year in the system. Uh, had a couple of big games. I didn't even know he had a, I think he had a big game against Miami uh, last year. So do I trust Joe Flacco for a, a few games? Do I think that based on the fact that this offensive line looks better than it's been for a while with the Jets and look at all the talent that's around him now that Zach's going to be able to eventually work with? Yeah, I think that this system seems to have worked for him. Yeah. Um, I still have to see it in the regular season to believe it again. He's another year older. Uh, but if he only starts week one, let's say yeah. and Zach comes back week two and that week one matchup is against his former team. Yeah. You know how that usually works out. Sometimes that usually works out pretty good for the former player. Hey, I'm playing my former team. I'm really up for this game. And he puts up these big numbers and he goes up against his team. It's a success. I can live with that, but you don't want, I don't think you want to live with Joe Flacco starting more than a few games during the season. No, no. I, I mean, that thing, again, I'm a little harsh on Flacco. And you have more insight into watching him more in recent in uh, recent years, uh, but he's just to me he's never been the same quarterback since he signed that big deal with Baltimore. You know, 
And uh, you're right. I mean, look, uh, it, you're not going to win a championship with him anymore. Um, you, you might not even be able to contend for a playoff spot anymore with Joe Flacco. But if in terms of just a short term fix, the situation that Greg just described, uh, yeah, he could be adequate in that role. And, and Mike White has had a little bit of success when given the opportunity. Again, um, so, quarterback yeah. friendly system. Mike right. White all of a sudden gets I'm, into the into I the action Russ last year. Talking about Mike White, and you hated him in college, if I remember right. It, no, it, I mean he it, he put up a lot of those numbers that I think in the older day, like 15, 20 years ago, it was a system, the spread system where you where you said there's no way that's going to convert to the NFL. Yeah, and you just didn't believe it. And he goes to the Cowboys and he does nothing. And you're like, oh, there you go again. It's just not going to work out. But things are changing, and yeah. things have even changed just the last few years since he's been drafted so much that what he did in college now is a lot of the same terminology using in the NFL. So I think that's been a benefit to Mike White. And like I said, it's a quarterback friendly system for him. And so even Mike looked pretty good. Now, look, he struggled a little bit too last year. Yeah. And that's the no, reason no, why no. Flacco, I think is ahead of him on the depth chart because there were some issues that, but let's keep in mind, Mike had some issues. And as you were saying before, the, the the skill position players that were out there at the end of the season were, were just as bad as you can imagine. Braxton Berrios, who's been a nice little player. Yeah. And he was like the star of yeah. the offense. That shows you how depleted they were at the end of the last season. Yeah. And nothing against Braxton Berrios, but he should be at the very number four. worst. Uh, number three or number four. Option, yes. You know, so you're right. And, um, you know, I look at, and we only got about eight minutes here to go, but we're going to, uh, cover as much as we can in that short amount of time. Um, you look at the schedule, and uh, I look at Mark's magazine, Mark Lawrence's playbook football annual, folks. Uh, if you have not obtained that, uh, you, you need to do so. If you're a, a football betting guy, that's the best on the market. I know Phil Steele puts out a publication, and it's a great one. But if you're just into the uh, betting aspect of football, Mark's magazine is the way to go. And nothing against Phil. Um, anyway, uh, you look at their schedule. I have them both, by the way. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And I do too. But yeah. I'm just saying, uh, I'm a little biased, and so are you. Um, anyway, yeah, I use, I use Phil. I use Phil basically for the the players, the yeah. rosters. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's and it. this and is he, all part of the handicapping. I don't I don't use any of Phil Steele's stuff for handy Phil Steele's magazine for handicapping. No, exactly, exactly. And I and I do the same. Um, any in any event, Mark has a section in his magazine. And there's two ways to calculate uh, strength of schedule. Uh, the first way is where I put a lot of emphasis on it, and that's taking whatever the team's upcoming opponents are for this this season coming up, and adding their win total projections set by the odds makers. Um, when you do that, the Jets have the uh, eighth toughest schedule in the NFL. Uh, now, the other way to do it is take their opponents coming up for this upcoming season and look at those opponents and combine their win percentage from the year before. When doing that, it's the 17th toughest. I put a lot more stock what the odds makers say because um, they're, they're telling you that even though these teams are playing this year, were middle of the road last year, they're projecting them to be much better this year. Um, having said all that, when I look at their schedule, just from a layman standpoint, um, I'm looking at it and saying it's really tough on the top end. You know, the first six games are going to be crucial to how well they do or don't do. And the back half is doable, Greg. Yes. I mean, they, they so your thoughts on their schedule and then uh, finish this up with telling us whether they're going to go over or under their win total projection of five and a half. Uh, well, I'm going to look at it in the more positive way based on my projection. And what I do is I look here and I say, okay, they get Baltimore opening up week one, which is important because I believe if I'm looking at it here for the last five openers have been on the road for the jets. So it's good for a team that's struggling over the last several years to try to get off to a good start at home, especially with Lamar Jackson, who is, hasn't exactly, isn't exactly coming off a great season. And like I said, if it is Joe Flacco, maybe you get a little bit of charge. Flacco. Incentive, yeah. Yeah. 
So I'm not, I look at that as a winnable game. Then I look at Cleveland. There's no Deshaun Watson. And I'm supposed to be worried about Jacoby Brissett. Okay, good team, good defense, good running game, but Jacoby Brissett doesn't scare me. Winnable game. Cincinnati, you're not going to beat them two years in a row at home. I'm not no fool. At Pittsburgh, I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, Trubisky, I'm supposed to be scared about that. Not so much. Miami at home, they have dominated the Jets now for about six years or so. No question about that. But it's still a rivalry. Eventually, that's going to turn again. Jets Dolphin rivalry always turns like every five or six years. One team dominates, the other team dominates. And they get them at home, though. And again, in my opinion, winnable game. Uh, but at Green Bay, you still have to play New England, but you get New England at home. You got to play Buffalo. You get Buffalo at home. So there's a lot of tough games, as you mentioned, but I do believe that there are winnable games in the tough part of their schedule that if they can somehow going into the bye, even if they only win three games going into the bye, yeah. Yeah. the at back end of their schedule, you have Chicago, you have Minnesota, you got Detroit, you got Jacksonville, you got Seattle, and then you get Miami again, which who knows what they're going to be like. But still, fact is, you win three out of all those games and you're over the total. Yeah. Yeah. I, so. I agree with you. I like they're over five and a half and you do have to lay a premium price to do that. But um, you know, the way Greg just broke it down, he really simplified things for you guys. And he likes the jets to go over the total of five and a half. And again, folks uh, we've been joined by Greg De Palma of the prime sports network. Uh, you can find him at prime sports network, YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of great shows on that network. Uh, gambling related, um, and, and also uh, overviews. Uh, some of the stuff he does with college football, I love because he he not only gets guys that knows the program, but beat writers and, and guys who are really in the know. So it's just not a handicapper coming out there and giving their opinion. He goes right to the source of people who are around those programs every day and have been around those programs for quite some time. So Again, folks, I encourage you, Prime Sports Network YouTube channel, uh, subscribe to the channel. And, and, and while you're there, hit that alert button, and you'll be notified right away upon uh, Greg putting up any one of his shows on that channel. And you also, a friendly reminder to you guys, and we just topped 7,700 subscribers. Thank you very much, folks. We definitely appreciate your support. If you have not subscribed, take a second to do so. It costs you absolutely nothing. There's no strings attached. And as I alluded to with Greg, hit that subscribe button and also hit your alert spell and uh, you'll be notified right away upon any of our podcasts going up on this channel. Greg, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope I can have you on again. We'll talk sure. on, uh, through the course of the season because yes. I want uh, people to show I want you to show your sports betting knowledge, which... <laughs> I respect very much too. You're not just a, a one of those hosts that has sports betting guys on. You have strong opinions in that regard. So we look forward to having you on in a future show, Greg. Likewise, Ross. Thanks for having me. Yeah. For Greg De Palma and Ross Benjamin, I'd like to wish each and every one of you all the very best. Take care and God bless, folks.